I'll be speaking about how we have uh, brought cloud into a very operational way in which uh, government services, government platforms are being driven using AWS. See, it has become very common to speak about cloud. Everyone speaks about cloud, but it is obviously easier said that, than done. It is like that proverb that you can take the horse to water, but can you actually make it drink? So I'll be trying to explain how we have taken the horse to water by ensuring that cloud services are available, but how have we also encouraged multiple government departments to actually adopt cloud? So how have we actually done this will be explained in this very simple uh, framework. There are five elements to this strategy which we have adopted in the state of Telangana. We call it the cloud first strategy. Now, the very first thing which we have done is that we have created a cloud adoption framework. Typically, as uh, all of you would know, I know that many of you are uh, actually representing government ministries, PSUs, etc. When we speak about government, there's a mistaken belief that government is one, it is one large entity, but the fact is that it is extremely fragmented, it is heterogeneous, it is siloed. Leadership styles range from someone who is very progressive to someone who is very status quoist. So in this kind of a complex environment, how do you actually make cloud become the go-to kind of a choice of multiple government agencies, multiple departments? So as I explained, the first thing which we have done is to bring out a cloud adoption framework. And you can look it up on the internet, on the website of our government, it.telangana.gov.in. It actually is a step-by-step -step process on how if a department wants to move into cloud, what is step one that you need to do, what is step two that you need to do, and so on and so forth. And how do we support that transition as the IT department? So, as was introduced, I, I am the Principal Secretary of Information Technology. How do we make this transition happen? As we all know, within the government also, cloud is there for decades. NIC actually pioneered Megraj almost uh, 15 to 18 years ago. But obviously, the adoption has not been uniform. Adoption has been slow. How do you change that scenario? How do you transform that mindset? Another very important thing which we have done is that we have actually brought out a very detailed government order which supports departments who want to do that. See, normally in governments, particularly in a state government, the fact that there is an enabling order also kind of uh, frees you. It does not kind of hold you back because in the government, many times people who are typically risk averse are not very sure if they have the authority to take a particular decision if that decision is backed by some kind of a law or an order, et cetera. So that is the second thing which we have done. The third important thing that we have done is to train people. And uh, I'm very happy to share that we have taken resources from AWS for multiple capacity building sessions. And uh, the training is not just to the heads of the departments. Every department typically has an in-house or an outsourced IT team. So the teams have also been brought to these uh, training programs, capacity building programs. How do you, one of the very important component of this uh, capacity building program is how do you make a cost benefit evaluation? You are already having some storage, retrieval, computing systems, but if you transition to a cloud, how do these things change? What are the pluses? What are the challenges, roadblocks, et cetera, et cetera? And then using the framework, using the government order and the inputs, that we give in this uh, capacity building sessions, we take responsibility for migrating the workload. So obviously, there is a layered way of understanding the migration. There are certain databases, there are certain applications which are very core to government, very fundamental to government. And as the last line mentions here, things which are very, very confidential, very es es essential for the government, that remains in the existing setup. Mostly, most of the governments have their own data centers. We also have that. But which are the ones which you can straight away move into cloud? And once you develop some confidence, how do you kind of go to the next level and next level? Another very important thing is that we want to set up a cloud center of excellence because we know that lots of innovation is happening in this area. Lots of innovation in cloud architecture, lots of innovation in computing, edge computing, adoption, and uh, some of you would know this, that Hyderabad already is a very well-established hub for promoting innovation, entrepreneurship. We have great world-class institutions like the T-Hub, 
and therefore we want to set up a center of excellence and max the standing request of ours that AWS should anchor this center of excellence, that, that kind of uh, remains. The other important point to understand is that there is a right time, the most opportune time at which you can prompt or nudge government agencies, government departments to really make that transition. And uh, as this slide explains, typically these are times when you have to take a decision on how much will you invest in procuring new IT infrastructure, or if some contract is running out, do you want to renew that contract? Do you want to upgrade the infrastructure? Because uh, lots of uh, new applications keep coming in. Uh, <clears throat> Lots of examples were given, like Coven and so on and so forth. These applications are multiplying the way the pace of digitalization is happening in our country. And therefore, there is always a need to upgrade the existing IT infrastructure. There's also sometimes issues of uh, resilience and performance. As was mentioned, Rahul mentioned that on one single day, on Honorable Prime Minister's birthday, the workload on the Coven uh, uh, application was humongous. And typically, we see this happening on various occasions in our own apps also, in our own applications as well. So if you are facing resilience or performance challenges, how do you take a call on uh, doing something different or doing something better? And of course, the cost of ownership is something very fundamental. And as I mentioned earlier, during the capacity building sessions that we have with government agencies, this is something which we emphasize upon quite a lot. So in the last two years, this uh, cloud uh, framework, the cloud-first policy, has been introduced in our state of Telangana two years ago. And I'm very proud to share that in a short span of two years, some huge applications, databases, have been successfully migrated to cloud. And uh, I would be particularly uh, happy to point out about the Arogeshri Healthcare Trust. See, you will be aware that there is a national health insurance scheme called uh, Ayushman Bharat. But what is happening in Telangana, and also, of course, in the state of Andhra Pradesh, is a precursor to that. It is called Arogeshri. There are close to 30 million users of this particular uh, application. And uh, within a matter of months, we have been able to transition from a legacy system into AWS cloud. E-Office is, again, a very interesting case study. Incidentally, both these two case studies of Arogeshri and E-Office have been published. So you can look it up to read more about how these have been done. And there are so many others and uh, many more to come. So I personally feel that if there is a very well thought through, practical, implementable strategy on how do you ensure that government as a whole, uniformly, with support, with handholding, moves to crowd, then uh, ours is a very good example to listen to and uh, to emulate. And uh, once again, I'm very grateful to the AWS team for providing the right kind of support and guidance in our journey. Thank you very much.